right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeliner CRM here in lovely San Diego as usual. And today I am joined by Andrea Freyrear, who is in Boulder, Colorado. How are you doing, Andrea? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Andrea was an early convert to the ways of agile marketing. And I love this idea of Andrea, that you're a marketer, but you have agile coaching certifications. Um, you scrum. You're a scrum master. Mm-hmm. Um, and for people who aren't familiar with that, you know, uh, scrum master is is somebody who, especially in software development, um, scrum masters bring everybody together and they and they uh, facilitate the agile development um, process. So they're kind of the leader and every day like driving things forward. So as the name agile would suggest, you have to, you, it's, it's not the way development used to be done when it was all like neatly laid out with long product roadmaps and all of that kind of stuff. It's really been able to react and to create things quickly, but effectively and move them forward, correct? Yeah, that's exactly right. It's it's moved very far away from the bad old days when we would wait two years for a Windows update and then it would come yeah. out and everyone hated it. So that was yeah. that was the waterfall way of development, and yep. uh, Agile was the answer to that very serious problem. Absolutely, and Andrew is also the author of the book uh, "Death of a Marketer," and then you have a new book coming out soon that's already on pre-order. If you want to just give us the title of that new book, yeah, "Mastering Marketing Agility" will be coming out this summer. Excellent. So, um, when it comes to when it comes to marketing, right? I mean, you have a lot of people who uh, you know think of marketing. Well, it's kind of an art, and mm-hmm. it's uh, we get to do all the fun stuff. So, the idea of bringing this kind of agile and even these kind of software development related disciplines to it would seem like pretty, you know, anathema to a lot of traditional <laughs> marketers, shall we say? Yeah, that's that's a not uncommon reaction. It's true because we we think of ourselves as sometimes the uh, the arts department, right? We're going to mm-hmm. bring that spark of creativity and and indefinable something to the yep. to the promotion of our products and services. And it's difficult to say, well, you've got to do that within this strict time box that we've established. And there can be some pushback on that. Yeah. So what are, what are some of the advantages um, that you found through bringing these type of uh, development techniques into the marketing sphere? Because, I mean, I totally agree with you in, in that it's well needed and well overdue because, you know, you know marketing needs to be much more um, systematized, if you like, so that yeah. it can be measured properly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the benefits are are many. Um, it's a very long list and you're right. It was in my opinion as well, far overdue. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you look at some of the common delivery times, right. When it takes us six to eight months to get a campaign to market, that is not in line with consumer expectations of real time, personalized, relevant messaging. And so agile allows us to get comfortable with more of that rapid release cycle. It doesn't say that we can't be creative. It doesn't say that we don't still bring that value to the process, but it does say, let's apply that same energy to a project that we can complete in two weeks instead of one that takes us eight months. And then we put it out. And again, people may not react to it at all, or they may react Mm -hmm. very, very badly to it. Um, I think the most recently well-publicized version of this is the Peloton ad that came out over the, the holidays, sure. right? Whereas this huge commercial that costs lots of money and it, people have a very strong negative reaction to it. Um, and so that's a big bang marketing campaign that we want to move away from when we start to use more of these agile ways of working. Yeah, absolutely, and I think it's uh, it's a great uh, it's a great lesson. But I think one that's hard for some people because, like I always say to people, don't get married to your projects, especially mm-hmm. nowadays, because because of exactly what you're talking to, uh, talking about is you don't have the same time frames. You've got to get things out, and you've got to and and here's the tough part is you got to test them in the market in real time, right? You can't go, you can't keep perfecting and tweaking and everything because then the world will have passed you by. Yep. Yeah, and it's it's the realities of the market we're in, right? Something's going to happen. We think of how quickly entire new channels emerge Mm -hmm. these days. And we as marketing people need to be able to get into that channel and communicate with people in a way that is 
meaningful and value adding and not overly marketing feeling, right? And so that that takes some some trial and error to make it happen. And it can't be six months of trial and then six months of evaluation and then we try again. Like that that type of schedule just doesn't cut it anymore. Yeah. And I guess part of that is it's it's like um I mean going back to your software analogy, like I mean software developers have have lived in this world forever, right? I mean, as you know, you test something and then, you know, you develop something, you release it, you can do all the testing you like, but eventually once you release it, like somebody's going to find uh, something wrong with it that you never considered, like, you know, and right. so then you just need to quickly like address that and move on. And I think that's probably where you're saying that's probably a tough thing for some marketers to get their head around is that they're going to have to put something out. And then, as you say, it's either going to hit or it's not, or it may need to be tweaked immediately but they're going to get some pretty instant feedback. Yeah. And the balance that that we have to strike as well is being stewards of the brand, right? We can't put things mm-hmm. out that are going to be harmful to the overall messaging and the um, larger goals of the marketing function, right? And so mm-hmm. there's a balance to strike there. And at, at that point, I think we have an interesting divergence from software Because if someone brings a software development team a feature request, they say, this thing would be awesome if you could put it into the the product. The developers have complete authority to say no to that. Mm -hmm. And no one can can go around behind them and sneak into the code base and add a feature. But with as accessible as marketing technology has become, when someone comes to the marketing team and says, I really need this one page thing or this landing page or this something, and we say we are committed, right? For the, for the duration of the sprint, we can't do it for you. Mm -hmm. They can go make it themselves and it can be untrackable and off brand and really terrible. And they can kind of do this end run around the process. So it's a very unique uh, situation that agile marketing teams find themselves in. Yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting one that you raised because it is, it is very true because uh, I mean, that is tends to be, and you know, it tends to be sales. That's a lot of the time to blame here where sales just go, Oh, I can't wait around for marketing. They don't understand. So we'll just do it ourselves. And yes, the technology has allowed that to happen uh, or has enabled that and made that much easier. So I guess part of the Part of the solution here is that sales and marketing have to continue to become more and more aligned and integrated and work closely together so that both can understand the constraints that the other works under. Yeah, absolutely. And even to the point of creating some cross-functional teams that incorporate both groups so that they can work side by side and work towards these shared objectives uh, reduces so much of that friction and and those issues. Yeah, and that's why I mean I always would encourage uh, you know that there should be some marketing representation on on sales with sales meetings and all of that and understanding. I mean me, I mean I look after the sales function for for pipe or the marketing function rather for pipeline or CRM, but I'm on all of this group sales meetings. And in fact, I just literally came off as sales calls supporting a salesperson a few moments ago, and I think that's where more marketing people need to go is they can't shy away anymore because it used to be once upon a time it was they could silo themselves a little and go ah and separate themselves a little for sales and say this is you know we're giving you what you need because we know what you need better than you do now as you say you can't really do that so you really do need to reach out yeah, and and marketing can do that across a lot of different areas. Uh, I like to say that we can be kind of the patient zero for business agility because we touch so many other groups. If we can start to implement agile ways of working, it spreads quite quickly um, to the different parts of the business that we touch. And so we're a good candidate for for making it work inside of marketing. So when you work with organizations and you bring and you bring this agile marketing um, agile marketing idea to them. What are some of the what are some of the first things you do, and um, and what are some of the surprises maybe that that uh, customer has? One of the first things we do is myth bust. Uh, that takes a little <laughs> bit of time uh, because there's there's quite a strong perception that agile marketing should look and act like agile software development. Um, mm-hmm. Scrum, as you've alluded to, is quite common in software mm-hmm. development. There are many different ways to do Agile on a day-to-day basis. And so we spend quite a lot of time educating the marketers and their leadership on other options like Kanban, Lean, Mm -hmm. some of these other more lightweight 
frameworks Mm -hmm. and then encouraging the marketing function to kind of pick and choose the practices that feel relevant to the way that they work and then still apply them with a great deal of rigor and discipline, right? We're not kind of loosey goosey with have daily stand up if you feel like it. Like you mm. you still have in daily stand up and you're still doing some of these tried and true ways of working. But things like creative services functions hate sprints. They hate them with the fire of a thousand suns. And so telling them that's okay, let's do some continuous delivery through a Kanban system and you're still part of the agile world and you can still work in a way that feels right to you. Those are a lot of the early conversations that need to happen um, for Agile to even be possible. Yeah, no, I, I think I think that makes sense. And I, I I'm personally, I love Lean. Um, mm-hmm. I did Lean office training many years ago, and um, bringing bringing the the ideas of Lean manufacturing into knowledge worker um, environments, it, it's very very enlightening. And I think that's what it's a very simple concept, but it's very enlightening for people when they see about removing, you know, waste and roadblocks and obstacles and shrinking the time as you say that's something that most people can get their head around intellectually intellectually at least pretty quickly yeah yeah and then once we kind of have said you know there's other ways of being agile and and Mm -hmm. what part of them feels like it would work for you then it comes time to um, have the harder conversations about team structure uh, because marketing is quite project focused Mm -hmm. and that means that a single marketer may sit on seven ten 15 projects. And if we say, okay, all the projects are now running in Agile, all of a sudden now I have to go to 15 daily stand-up meetings uh, and it breaks down right instantly. Mm -hmm. And so then we have to walk it back and say, all right, well then how can we set up a team that is customer centric, right? It's top of the funnel team, conversion team, retention team. They're going to do all those projects, all those activities related to that part of the journey And now we're customer centric instead of all about our projects or our functions. That's a bigger lift. Uh, That one can take a little time to execute, but it makes a massive difference. So here's here's another challenge I think that's facing marketing organizations. It's facing all organizations and all departments, but let's just focus on marketing is um, to be effective in in today's world. There are so many different skills that you need. Mm -hmm. And some of these skills are so um, specific, right? And maybe not needed all the time, but needed at the thing. So the idea of building teams where you maybe have full-time resources and you have variable outside resources, maybe you have, you know, contracts. So people making that all work together as a team, I think that's one of the biggest challenges that all organizations are going to have going forward because you can't possibly recruit as people for every single thing that you're going to need. Yeah, that's a you've you've hit the nail on the head there for sure. Um, it's a big issue, and you wouldn't want to in a lot of cases because, sure, as you said, you know you need them thirty percent of the time. There's no point in hiring one for every single agile team. Um, and so we we work on that with groups a lot, is to say, mm-hmm. you know, you need four agile teams, but you've only got one SEO specialist mm-hmm. or whatever mm-hmm. the math <laughs> is. Yeah. And then to say, okay, how are we going to do that, right? How are we going to plug them in? And oftentimes it comes down to simple things, or they sound simple, at least like communication and visibility, right? To sit down at the start of a quarter and say, what projects are each of the teams working on? Who needs SEO more than others? Like, let's make sure we have appropriate allocation. If everybody is suddenly working on SEO related activities, then maybe we've got to hire a contractor for the short term or Mm -hmm. take it to an agency or what have you instead of not having that conversation and then all assuming we get full-time access to the SEO person and that person having a terrible quarter because they're working 80 hours a week trying to keep everybody happy. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I could agree more. And I think that's going to, that is going to be one of the biggest challenges going forward is really understanding how to, how to operate within those kind of constraints and then just, um, you know, build teams and that you can scale up, scale down as necessary. Yeah. While, while still, keeping them together as long as possible. You know, sure, you get to that, sure. that high performing phase takes months and months. Um, mm-hmm. And we don't want, we need flexibility, but we also need some stability in the teams. And so finding that sweet spot of, you know, let's flex where we can and, and stay together as long as possible is, is hard. And it takes some mm-hmm. trial and error sometimes. 
So what are some of the surprises then when you work with a customer? What are some of the things that they're surprised when they go through this process that maybe they weren't expecting? One of my favorite surprises that people have is how much work could be shared that they assume Mm. they have to do, right? Like this is my thing and I always do this thing because I've always done it. But we, when we visualize work the first time, we ask them to put a little green dot on their cards that could be given to someone else. It didn't Mm -hmm. have to, but theoretically, right? Hypothetically, maybe. And then the number of green dots that show up after we go through this exercise, everyone's quite surprised by it because they think they're, they're very specialized and, Mm -hmm. and unique. But in fact, like much of what we do with a little help and support could be done by someone else, which is actually a really good thing. Yes. Um, Yes. And so people are more cross-functional than they realize is a good kind of fun surprise. Yeah. And I think that's a great, I think that's a great one because yeah, because people there's number one, there's the instinct to kind of keep everything to yourself because it, um, you know, it makes you think that you're indispensable, even though you're not. Um, and then, but when you can break through that and then it realize that when you can let go of some things, it allows you to focus on more high value areas that where you can bring your real expertise to. Yes. Yes. And, and then it becomes, how can I help my team succeed? Not how can I like show that I did the most out of anybody yeah. over these last <laughs> two weeks. And, and that's ultimately better for everybody, right? Workload yeah. is more equitable. Customers and audiences are getting more value out of the work that we do because there's fewer bottlenecks. We're more aligned around business objectives. Like it's good for everybody. Um, but you're right. It's a little bit of a mental leap sometimes yeah. for people to make. Ab- Absolutely. All right. Well, we're bumping up against the end, end of our time, um, Andrea. So before we go, all of Andrea's information will be in the bio and the links to her current book and her new book when it comes out. But before we go, please tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, uh, I'm the co-founder of a company called Agile Sherpas, and we specialize exclusively in training marketers on how to be more agile and how to do that on a day-to-day basis. So we offer training, coaching, and consulting for marketing organizations of all shapes and sizes to uh, make this stuff actually happen. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I think it's well needed in the marketing area. Absolutely. You know, we need to bring a little bit of more system and, 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 um, and define things and, and leverage some of these tools like Lean and Agile and that, that can really help you operate more efficiently and get more done at the end of the day. Because let's face it, the work ain't going to run out anytime soon in the world <laughs> we live in today, right? No way. <laughs> Always going to be there. All right. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline and CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.